Hey everyone, this is Phil at the Back Rose Riding Channel coming at you with today's video. So in my last video, I was talking about the Road King uh, having its 25,000 mile service done and blowing its head gasket. I figured I might as well give a 25,000 mile review. Well, I'm not quite to 25,000 miles, but I'm within a thousand miles of it. So I figured it's pretty close. So obviously, uh, if you just watched the last video, you know that um, I had a blown head gasket uh, on the rear, the rear jug. So I had to get that fixed. It cost about right around $800 uh, to get that all done, which I didn't think was too bad. Uh, considering the work that they did testing things out and cleaning it up and, and getting it back in shape again. So special thanks to uh, Stormy Hill Harley in Claremont, Florida. They did a great job on the bike. But uh, that's been uh, my, my big problem that I've had uh, with the Road King up to this point uh, was that right there. Uh, I was a little surprised that I had to have that done at, you know, 20, well, at that point it was 23,300 miles, something like that. And I was a little surprised. I mean, I guess I, you know, I'm expecting this thing to go for 100,000 miles before it really needs anything, which is just not going to happen with a motorcycle. But, uh, you know, the repair was done and uh, finished up. And, I, I, you know, a friend of mine had just bought a 2017 uh, Street Glide. And luckily his was still under uh, the 30-day warranty. He bought it used, had 15,000 miles on it. But both of the head gaskets were blown on his bike, so I don't know if it's maybe something in that first iteration of the Milwaukee 8 that they put in these bikes or or, or what. I haven't really heard of there being a major head gasket problem, but um, it just seemed unusual that both of our bikes had that exact same issue. Uh, but we're back on the road and running again. Uh, the bike itself seems to be running pretty well. I, I would say that the head gasket has probably been blown for a while. It just wasn't leaking oil like it started to after uh, the oil change. I, it really leaked a lot of oil right after the oil change. It was blowing it everywhere. Uh, the reason I say that is I noticed that I've got, you know, a good bit more. I, I hadn't really noticed before, but I have a good bit more power now. And so, you know, that's obviously been because of losing compression on the on the bike so they're definitely it's been around for a while I just don't know when it actually went I have never noticed oil leaking on the bike at all I mean you might occasionally get the smell of burnt oil on the road but I just figured it was a car in front of me something like that uh, now the bike's been used for commuting quite a bit and I you know I don't know if maybe I might have let it get too hot on a summer day something like that maybe I let it overheat a little too much and the gasket just gave way that's you know that's a possibility uh, but I guess we'll we'll get a pretty good handle on it here as we see how it's gonna do as we go forward I'm just looking now so far so good uh, I have noticed that my front brake is fairly soft or feels fairly soft now I talked to the dealership about it and they said that uh, the brake is actually fine. I've got at least half of my brake pad uh, left so they didn't uh, recommend changing it yet. And uh, But it just feels so a little soft, a little softer than I really like. Now some of that could be too with just getting the, the Scout 60. Of course it's got brand new ABS on it. and. Um, you know, it might be just the difference in me riding that and coming back to the Road King. Uh, my, my rear brake feels really strong. Uh, but let me speak to the ABS side of things for a moment. So the Road King, I don't know if the 2020 is different or not, but the Road King ABS has been uh, an option on it. And anybody who's looking to ride or buy a Road King, please spend the 800 bucks and get ABS. You will not regret it. You need it. I do not have it on mine and I regret that constantly. The wheels lock up very easily on this bike in a quick stop situation and that makes the situation all that more dangerous because then you're not only having to deal with the quick stop and trying to get your bike downshifted correctly 
but you're trying to keep your wheels from locking up and you know planting you flat on the ground and so get the ABS don't try to save $800 save $800 some other way uh, you need ABS on this bike it's a heavy bike and you need ABS so that's really not much more I can say about that because I'm not a mechanic and I can't really give you the ins and outs of stopping capability and all that I'm just telling you from 24,000 miles of riding experience on this bike and I, I still, hands down, that is the number one thing I wish I would have done. I, I'm really frustrated with myself that I did not do that. It's not enough for me to trade the bike in and get something else just to get ABS. But I, wow, I wish I'd have gotten ABS. So, if you can take anything from any of my videos and you're looking at a Rogue King, make sure you get ABS. Now, the new bikes, like I said, I didn't look into specs or anything. So maybe the 2020s, that's now standard. I would hope that at some point Harley makes that standard on all of their bikes. But I know it's still an option on like the Sportsters and things like that. So I would assume that maybe the Road King, since it is their entry level touring bike, may still have that as an option. Get it. Get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. Can't say that enough. So. The one thing that I have had uh, get a little bit worse recently, I think this is probably just age, uh, if anything else. It's, and these are, honestly, these are all, other than the head gasket, these are all very minor things that I've had. I'm just giving you my, my irritation list on the bike. So on the windshield, the quick release windshield, you have these tabs right here. And my tabs have started, they've started rattling. I want to tell you what, man, that when you're when you're in traffic or you're sitting at a light, those things will just start vibrating and making all kinds of noise. Now I can I can get it to stop if I you know sit there and mess with it and bend the bend the wires around. I can get it to stop for a few minutes and then you know next time I stop it'll start doing the same thing again. So you know, minor irritation, but that does that has occurred for me. I'm about, I don't know how many thousand miles now on my tires. I can't remember when I got them, but I want to say we're running at around probably 4,000 miles or so on the Michelin 2s. Still very, very, very happy with those. I've been in several uh, rainstorms with those tires, and I've been extremely, extremely happy with those. Uh, the one thing that I have noticed, uh, getting back to the bike itself, uh, my speedometer, uh, especially down here in Florida, they definitely have an issue with the speedometers not sealing correctly. Uh, this thing, as I ride even today, it will probably fog up. I'll get a bunch of fog behind the glass. And it gets to the point where you can't even see the speedometer anymore. So maybe that's just this particular speedometer. But I know I've seen that. I mean, I think each Harley that I've had so far, other than my night rod, have had the exact same issue so i'm assuming that's just a harley thing it does it does get very annoying especially down here because you know it's florida so during the spring summer fall every day is humid uh and so um it, it'll fog up at least half of the speedometer fogs across where i can't see anything i can't see my gate or my uh digital display can't see anything so um, I know they've redesigned several displays on the bikes for 2020. A lot more, uh, a lot more on the multi-display area. So maybe they fixed some of that seal issue. Uh, but that has definitely been a problem for me. I know some people have complained uh, about their gas gauges being very inaccurate. Mine overall has been pretty good. I've not had any problems with mine. Uh, it seems fairly accurate according to. What the digital readout says according to what the gauge says and when i fill up it's about right as far as how many gallons go into it i most of the time i put in five gallons of gasoline every time i fill the bike up and so uh it's been pretty consistent with that the one thing i have not gotten for this bike yet uh, once again after having ridden it for quite a few miles that i would really wish i had 
is highway pegs. Uh, I've got the engine guard down here and uh, that's been great to have, but I could really use some uh, highway pegs. Uh, the last couple of road trips that I've been on, uh, I, you know, my knees, I have pretty bad arthritis in my right knee and uh, it's gotten a little worse over the last uh, year or so. So uh, on a long road trip, I could use that. I mean, I, I can kind of get around that I stick my foot up here, <laughs> put it on the uh, on top of the bar, and that at least lets me shift position enough that I can take some of that some of that pressure off of my knee. But I would like to have pegs where I could just stick my foot out, jam my foot into that peg, and kind of straighten my legs out and relax a little bit. So that's going to be a, a purchase I will be making on this bike uh, sometime in the pretty near future here. So, uh, I know once again, this one probably comes down to what type of helmet that you use, how tall you are, what your windshield is set up like. For me, uh, like I said, I'm running a Shoei RF 1200. Now the buffeting for my helmet is not quite as bad on this. I, there must be a little bit better airflow over the helmet compared to where the windshield is at. Uh, but I still get a good bit of uh, head buffeting, especially at anything above 70 miles an hour. Actually anything above 65, uh, the buffeting gets pretty significant. So I still wanna look at picking up the uh, lower fairings that go on each side of the engine guard. I know they run, I thought it was around $700. I'll probably try to install those myself. Uh, I'm a little nervous about looks. I don't know how that's going to look and it's, it's, I can find some pictures online, but uh, I mean, it, I don't think it looks bad, but I'm just, I'm nervous about spending that kind of money and not being able to actually see what it's going to look like. But uh, I think I would like that because then you could turn the airflow on and off. Uh, I could turn the airflow on if I need it to cool my engine while I'm running around town. But when I'm on the highway, I can flip that airflow off so that it prevents that buffeting and prevents that airflow from catching my helmet and kicking my head around. I mean, I'm okay with it. Like today, I'm going for a short ride uh, on the bike. You know, I've got a little bit of buffeting. It's not bad right now, but I got a little bit. It's not going to bother me because I'm going to be on the bike for an hour, hour and a half. And that's fine, but when I'm going on it, if I'm like I'm gonna be going, hopefully going to Tennessee sometime in the next couple of months, and heading up there, I do not want to have my head, you know, kicking around constantly for eight hours when I ride. Uh, that just that gets really old really fast. Uh, so that'll be another uh, purchase that I will make. Um, trying to think if there's anything else from a Road King perspective uh, that I could touch on that's been a problem for me. I, I, I mean, I'm trying to give you everything I can. Uh, I do have this this floorboard down here, left side, does rattle some uh, when I'm sitting at a stoplight. Uh, all I got to do is kind of lift it up and set it back down and it goes away. So it must be something with how it's connecting with the uh, peg down there. But uh, I haven't really sat down and figured it out because it's not bad enough and it's it's nothing that I can't fix in two seconds sitting at the light. So, uh, and I think I even mentioned that in the last review. Let's see, for long haul riders, uh, I'm still running the standard Road King seat. So I've got almost 25,000 miles on this seat. It's not bad. Uh, you will, at least for my butt anyways, I have to, I can typically, if I'm on the highway, I can probably go for almost an entire tank of gasoline before I need to stretch my legs. Especially if I, you know, I'm doing the whole deal or I'm putting my legs up here and just kind of kicking back and relaxing a little bit so I can shift my position enough that I can keep the blood flowing to my butt. Uh, I haven't tried anything else. I've had some recommendations given to me by a couple friends of mine. Because I think that is probably something I will change out uh, is the, the default seat. Because I'd like to get into a seat where I'm not dying to get off the bike the last 50 miles of my tank of gasoline. And that's usually what happens is I, you know, I ride for 150 miles and I know that I've got to fill up again in another 40, 50 miles. So I just tough it out 
and uh, go. But I, I'd really like to get a seat where I don't feel like I have to do that. So um, th that may be something that you want to consider. Everybody's slightly different on that. Uh, but, I, you know, I've thought about looking at maybe a sundowner seat and just maybe trying, trying some different things out and see what it's like. As far as padding is concerned, I don't think it's a padding issue for me because overall the seat's very comfortable, especially like compared to my Scout. Oh man, this seat is wonderful. But uh, I don't know, everybody's different on that. So, let's see, is there anything else that I have noticed? Uh, oh, there is one thing that I have noticed. Uh, the dealership said there they didn't see any issue with this. So it may just be me, but uh, as I am uh, upshifting from second to third gear, there are times uh, it, it almost feels like it goes into neutral again. You get that kind of a, of a little bit of a mushy feeling. And I don't really like that because it makes me feel like the it's not going into gear. And sometimes I don't go into gear and I'm still in second thinking that I'm going into third. So that's not real great. And uh, I don't know if it's a problem with the transmission or just it could just be me, honestly, because it does it very rarely. And usually it's if I'm shifting quickly and I just don't quite hit it right. So it's probably more me. I just, I guess I seem to notice it more now than I used to when the bike was new. It just, uh, it still clunks into gear pretty solid. It just doesn't feel quite as solid when I hit that gear anymore. So I don't know if that's normal issue or not, but not really worried about it. Like I said, I had them look at it. They were, they said it looked fine. Everything looked good. Transmission looked solid. So, uh, I guess that we'll just see how it goes. I think that's it, uh, for this. It's just a quick review, not nothing super technical or anything like that. Um, uh, solid bike. Bike's three years old now. Um, I'm still as happy now as I was first day I got it. Uh, I mean, obviously a little frustrated about the head gasket going out, but you know, things happen. It's not an, an unusual repair. And at least I didn't have to replace the head, which would have been about another $600. So uh, yeah, I, I gotta say the Rogue King is a great, great bike. And if you're like me and you like having the option of being able to take off my uh, windshield, this makes all the difference in the world because you still get the uh, you still get the touring bike and full touring suspension, full touring package. Got the bags. I can put the the uh, the touring kit on the back and everything. But yet I can take my windshield off if I want to, and I do that. Uh, quite a bit. I wish I'd kind of wish I'd have done it today because it is hot right now. Ooh. So, uh, as you can tell by my arms, they're <laughs> getting baked today. But, um, yeah, it's a solid bike. Uh, and if you're if you're looking to get into the touring bike market, this is a great bike to use. So. Twenty-five thousand miles. It still pulls just like it did when it was brand new. Got down pulling a little bit too much right now. Need to slow down. All right, I think that's it. So, I hope this helps somebody. If you're looking uh, to seriously get the Road King, so if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. If you can, click that subscribe button. We all like to get new visitors to the channel. It'll help me keep these videos going. I'm trying to get better at getting them posted, so I uh, hope to have a Scout 60 review coming up for you guys in the next uh, couple of videos. So get out on that bike, let you hear it, let you see it. It's a beautiful bike. I really, really like it, and I think you will too. It's a great addition to my, to my personal stable, and uh, I'm really enjoying it so far. So, uh, so that's it. 
for all you riders. Keep the shiny side up and the rubber side down. Well, this is Phil at the Back Roads Riding Channel saying peace and we'll see you in our next video.